Hey gang, it's JC, and this is your Daily Dose for Thursday, September 9th, 2010, a cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. You can get us on your smartphone these days. Archives top of the page, Dave Murray's rainy weather forecast down in the corner, audio on iTunes, and here we roll on with our 15-month paid vacation. We're going to burn us some coal rains down in Florida. Uh, the weekend, you know, the president got involved, all these ministers, all these pastors, all these religious leaders, and this guy, earlier this morning, it sounded like maybe he was going to be talked out of it because he said God was talking to him. Now, if you tell a psychologist, psychiatrist that you're hearing voices, they lock you up. But if you say it's God talking to you, they don't lock you up. I've always been very amused and entertained by that. By the way, everything you need to know about this Pastor Terry Jones, you can find out by looking at his choice of facial hair. This guy has some weird thing going on over there. It's like a cross between Snidely Whiplash and that evil dude from Deadwood. Uh, they always say one man can make a difference in this country, but it's not always necessarily a positive thing. But uh, anyhow, we'll see if this guy goes through with it. It's turning into a circus. Also turning into a circus is MoDOT. They wait for the Rams home opener. 66,000 people trying to get into the Dome on Sunday afternoon. Actually, 65,000 because there's still 1,000 tickets left. And we might not get to see the game on TV. But the people who are trying to get down there are going to have to deal with the fact that I-55 is going to be closed in both directions at Union all weekend long. Poplar Street Bridge down to one lane in each direction on the weekend. And Highway 40 closed from 22nd to 8th Street. Somebody needs to get these people at MoDOT a RAM schedule and a Cardinal schedule because it always seems like they're doing stupid stuff like this. It's no wonder we're the fifth most stressed out city in America. Everybody's getting all worked up about that. The mayor issued a statement yesterday. I say, I don't know, I think we should just be glad that some people still consider St. Louis a city. I told you two and a half months ago that this dude, one of the judges on America's Got Talent, is going to be the replacement for Larry King. Two and a half months, I told you about this. And now CNN is finally confirming this, that Piers Morgan is going to do it. January is when it will happen. He's got a three-year deal, about $8 million a year. I've seen this guy. I don't get it. The White House party crashers, the Salahis, continue to enjoy tick, 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 14 minutes and 30 seconds into their 15 minutes of fame. Mikhail Salahi going full frontal nude in Playboy magazine. Meanwhile, the tabloids have outed Jim Parsons. He just won an Emmy for his role as Sheldon on The Big Bang Theory. Thank you very much for that, because we never could have figured that out on our own. Siteman Cancer Center yesterday issued the results of their major study on secondhand smoke, and it's worse than anybody thought. It's everywhere. The high-tech ventilation systems that some of the upper, you know, the high-end bars have really don't do any good. The nicotine and the stuff that will slowly kill you can linger for a day or two. The workers are at risk. I can't wait for January 1st around here. The former bodyguard for Britney Spears has been saying he's going to file a lawsuit for a long time. He finally did it. Sexual harassment lawsuit against Britney Spears. Fernando Flores is his name, and he has accused her of the following high crimes. Throwing herself at him. Making sure that he saw her in see-through clothing. And summoning him and then being naked when he showed up. This woman is white trash. The people around her are white trash. The people who listen to her are white trash. You know, for a long time, I think it's safe to say that she was the object of fantasy of a giant chunk of the male population of this country. Oh, I wish I could be with her. Oh, I wish I could be with her. And then finally it reached a point where you probably could have been, and then you didn't want to. This guy is claim claiming damages. Oh, my God, she flashed her cooter at me. How bad could it be? It's not like it was Ann Keefe or Phyllis Diller or something. Researchers at a university in Turkey have confirmed chubby men are better lovers than skinny men. Sometimes they can last four times as long as skinny men. The chubby men have... Now you're all excited about that, right? Look down. Yeah. Uh, chubby men have higher levels of female hormones than skinny men. Not so excited anymore, are you? Anyhow, that slows brain chemicals that lead to a climax. I, I may go in there and eat that box of donuts after all. 
34-year-old Shannon Riska of Milton, Florida, and her boyfriend were watching a Jennifer Lopez movie in their trailer home. Want to take a guess where this is going? Anyhow, she thought that uh, her boyfriend was spending a little too much time and getting a little too excited staring at Jennifer Lopez's keister. They got into a big fight, and she did the only thing she could do. What could she do under those circumstances? Right! She went outside and set fire to his boat, his go-kart, and his jacuzzi. She's in jail. But the entertaining part of the story for me is the fact that this guy has a boat, a go-kart, and a jacuzzi. If he didn't have all those things, maybe he wouldn't be living in a trailer. All right, the movie uh, Rudy, 1993, with uh, Sean Astin. Wonderfully inspirational movie. As a matter of fact, the real Rudy Rudiger, on whom the uh, movie is based, has been a motivational speaker for the last few years, and apparently is doing very, very well. And at the emotional climax of the movie, Rudy finally gets out onto the field during the last home game at Notre Dame because the rest of the team refuses to play unless he's inserted into the game. The crowd is chanting, Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. He gets carried off on the team's shoulders. Everybody goes away happy, wonderfully inspiration, inspirational movie. One problem. According to Joe Montana, who was on that Notre Dame team with Rudy in 1975, he says that that is not what happened. Uh, he's on the Dan Patrick show yesterday, and he's, he's actually tired of hearing about it, as a matter of fact. He says that none of the other players demanded that Rudy get playing time. It was already set up that the seniors would get into the game and play in that last home game, and that the crowd was not chanting, Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. Nobody, none of the players threw their jerseys. Rudy did get the sack. He was carried off by some of the players on the team, but according to... Joe Montana, they may have sort of done it to ridicule him. It was sort of a joke. Now, he did say he worked his butt off to get where he was and to do the things he did, but not any harder than anybody else. I guess that we can all get ready in a couple of years, find out that the blind side didn't really happen the way it was portrayed in the movie. It's a movie, folks. It's a movie. Speaking of movies, they're talking about making a Gilligan's Island movie. And somebody got a hold of a potential script. And, for instance, uh, the skipper and Gilligan have gone AWOL from the Coast Guard after running afoul of drug dealers. Marianne spends as much time as possible accidentally getting caught naked by the other characters. The professor is a pervert who's constantly chasing after her and Ginger. And the Howells, Thurston and Lovey, <laughs> are trying to rekindle their romance after he's lost his job with a corrupt power company. Good luck with all of that. Maybe you read the book Monday Night Mayhem about what really went on in the booth during the heyday of Monday Night Football with Dandy Don Meredith, Frank Gifford, and Howard Cosell. I ran the track with Juan Carlos, one of the black power athletes in the Olympics. Uh, anyhow, you know that story about Howard throwing up on uh, the other guys in the booth. Howard disputes it. I ran the track. Yeah. According to Bill Carter, the guy who wrote the book, and he's a, he also wrote the book The Late Shift, about the war between Leno and Letterman to get The Tonight Show. What was that, like 15 years ago now? I'm afraid it was maybe longer than that. Was it 20? I'm afraid to look. Yee. Anyhow, uh, Bill Carter is the uh, author of those books, and he has written a new book, and it's coming out on November 4th. And it's called The War for Late Night, When Leno Went Early and Television Went Crazy. It's a good friend of Eric Mink, by the way. He's been on the show a couple of times. And if you go to Amazon, Amazon.com, you can pre-order this book. Again, it's coming out on November 4th. It's called The War for Late Night, When Leno Went Early and Television Went Crazy. Really, really looking forward to Bill Carter's new book. It'll be great. It'll be great. I've already been told a couple of things about it from a little bird. All right, today Adam Sandler is 44, chronologically, and not necessarily emotionally. Uh, JC's Video Village, we ran the first three parts of that uh, five-part series I did back in 1986 for Channel 5 on Behind the Scenes at the Wheel of Fortune. And this week we're running the final two parts, the interviews with Pat and Vanna. You can check that out. These two people had no idea that they would be working on Wheel of Fortune essentially for the rest of their lives. JC's Wayback Machine, 
Remember back in the 80s, you couldn't t- turn the TV on without that, hey, burn, know what I mean? Hey, burn, McLean Gas, the TV commercials. Actor and comedian Jim Verney, who has since left us, by the way, uh, I think yesterday I said it was Ernest T. Worrell. I may have gotten him confused with Ernest T. Bass on the Andy Griffith Show because somebody actually cares about things like this and said it was Ernest P. Worrell. Thank you. I'm going to get these things right. They are of high importance. JC's Eye Candy, just a few weeks ago, Julia Roberts was all over the TV talking about the evils of Botox and plastic surgery and all these women are running around and getting plastic surgery and how, how awful that is and why are women doing this to themselves. Well, I'm showing you two pictures today on JC's Eye Candy and apparently Julia's uh, embargo on plastic surgery stops at the neck. There's a picture of her in a swimsuit taken about a year ago and then one taken about two weeks ago. And you tell me if the boob fairy hasn't arrived. Julia has had a boob job. You tell me if I'm wrong. You can check that out, JC's Eye Candy. That's right below what you're looking at right now. All right, tomorrow we're going to do a little talking about the Rams, given the fact that it's the home opener on Sunday. And also we're going to talk about uh, how different races tend to say different things about themselves on dating profiles. It's very interesting when it's coming up tomorrow. All right, that's it. Your Daily Dose for Thursday, September 9th, 2010. A cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. We'll see you tomorrow. In the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye.